Hello, welcome to another episode of Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky, and today I'm going to be using Photoshop Elements rather than my normal Photoshop. And I'm going to take you through adding some realistic snow to a, an image. Uh, this particular case, it's a snowy image here. We have some blue skies. We have some nice tonal qualities here. We've got a really nice looking picture, but normally when you take a picture of snow, it doesn't look quite like that. I have a picture here of what something would look like if you were taking a picture in the snow. As you can tell, it might be a little bit overcast. The blue skies aren't quite there. And then if it is snowing, it's going to dull out your picture some. So I'm going to take and transfer or transform this image with the blue sky into something that we just saw there, into something a little bit more like it's snowing. I want to start out with the background layer and our layers palette. And I'm going to select Control or Command J to duplicate that layer. And then we're going to use a couple different tools here at the top. We're going to use the enhancement and then we're going to use filters. Those are the two areas that I want you to concentrate on. And then the first thing is going to adjustments and then we're going to use the photo filter. And under the photo filter we have a couple different things that we can use here under the filter and I'm going to ask you to use the sepia. Now one thing with the sepia is that normally you would see sepia and that would make the whole image black and white looking with that sepia tone as if it was old or aged. And with this particular one, it just gives a photo filter, which is kind of like a hue, and it's going to start dulling out some of the area. So as I drag this over to about 68, 69, and then I show you over here, you can see that the trees here, they're starting to dull out a little bit, not quite as much tonal quality there. The skies aren't quite as blue, and then the snow is even getting a little bit grayer. I'm happy with that. I'm going to select OK now. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go over here and we need to create a new layer. Creates a new layer transparency there. And then I want to go and I want to fill this. Now my default settings here are foreground white and background black. If I just select D on the control panel, it would normally be black and then white. You can use this arrow set of arrows here to switch those or you can use X on the keyboard to switch them. So I'm going to put white in the foreground and black in the background. The reason I do this is so that I can use the control backspace or command delete depending upon if you're on a Mac or on PC and that just fills it real quickly so that you don't have to go to the edit fill. So I have this black here. Now why do I want this black? It's because I want to use a filter on this and the filters we have here I could start with a noise filter and you've seen some of those other tutorials online and uh, Howard over at TutCast does a great job of this if you're using Photoshop but I'm going to use the texture and I'm going to go over and use the grain texture and you can see that there's some wonderful looking snow that starts right here the only problem is is that snow is not green and red and blue um, if you come over here where it says intensity I've dialed up the intensity to 100 and I've dialed down the contrast to zero and that way it gives us that wonderful grain and I've chosen the enlarged grain type. Now I'm happy with that I'm going to select OK. Now once we have this selected I do need to change this into a black and white image because we know that snow is in all those colors so if we go over to the Enhance and we convert this into black and white, you can see that it goes from the colored version here and it is starting to look a little bit more like snow. I'm going to select OK. Now I'm still not really happy with this because it's not white enough to be snow. So I'm going to choose another one under the Enhance screen and I'm going to adjust my lighting and I'm going to go into my Levels command field and I want to drag this slider over to the left. And what that's going to do is it's going to start making my layer there look a little bit brighter. I uh, got some white there, maybe a little bit less, and maybe drag that over a little bit. Adjust these, and maybe drag that back out a little bit more. You can always bring this to the right some. All right, I'm starting to like this. So if you want to look at my numbers, they're 22, 1.49, and 85, and I'm going to select OK. 
So that doesn't look too bad right now. That's starting to look like snow. Well, there are two different layers that I'm going to be using. One of them is the close snow, and the other one is going to be the windy snow. So I need to do the Command J or the Control J to create a new layer. You can also take this layer and you can drag it upon the new layer icon. It will make a new layer copy, but I like to use the Command or the Control keystrokes so that it makes it a little bit faster. Now, we're going to start off with the snow that's in the front and we're going to take the filter and we're going to use our famous Gaussian blur there's our Gaussian blue and it's starting to look a little bit like snow and I'm going to leave it at about 1.2 so if you want to change yours to 1.2 and I've got the preview selected so that I can see my snow here now that's the close-up snow and then under the blending options here where it normally says normal if I go to screen what that does is it gets rid of the black. Now let me turn the visibility layer off here and you can see that the snow is starting to appear onto my pictures. It's starting to look kind of like a snowy day. Now I'm going to go down to this layer, turn the visibility back on. Now we need to get some motion into our snow layer here and I'm going to use the filter and I'm going to use the blur and this time I'm going to use the motion blur and I've selected right here to an angle of about negative 58 degrees. You can go maybe a little bit more or less. Maybe you want a, about a 42 and you can see that there's some motion here. Maybe you want 10 pixels. Maybe you want a lot. Maybe we can blow this out and uh, that's starting to look pretty good there. Distance of 12. Have the preview checked so that I can see what it's going to look like. And I can select OK. And of course I made a mistake. A live a live recording here so I'm going to undo the motion blur. Uh, very careful to be on the correct layer. Good lesson learned there. Uh, go back to filter. We'll try this again. We'll go to motion blur and there we go. We're starting to get some nice motion blur here. Maybe even a little bit more. Maybe I want some more uh, motion to my... and there we go. Ooh, Look at that nice 17 pixels. So now we're starting to look like we have some good motion here. I'm going to change my blending mode here to screen so that goes through and there we go we have some snow that's close up and we have some snow in the background that's flowing now this may look really good to you right now or if you think that maybe it's a little bit too much for you I'm gonna go and select the opacity and tune this down maybe it's just a little bit too much snow for your liking now remember this second layer here that's the snow that we had with the motion. If we go up here to the top, that is the snow that is closer to us, so a little bit larger here. And we go right there. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is to make a little bit of randomness is the snow that's closest to us, sometimes this isn't good enough, and it needs to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to extend my cursor out a little bit from the handles which is right here and until it turns into a nice curved arrows there and then I'm going to twist it I'm going to twist it like this and then I'm going to transform it by making it a little bit larger so I want to make sure that I go inside and capture all four corners of this particular picture so I'm just going to grab each one of these make sure it's within the four and I want to make some randomness here and now you can see that the snow that's closest to us it is now a little bit bigger now and so we have some more snow and if I'm happy with that I can either select the return key or I can check this little green box here and you can see that now I have lots of different snow and it seems like it's coming in different directions and there's a bit more randomness to it so I will go ahead once more. Let me turn the invisibility or the visibility off on some of these layers and show you. This is the original picture that we started out with and then we did the control J and then we added a photo filter to this and we added the sepia one and we kind of blew that out to make it look like this. Then we went and added a black layer above that and then from there we went in and used our texture grain filter and then created a copy of that and then we went over and we converted it into a black and white 
and then from there we used the screen mode. Uh, we did a little bit of level work there and here's what we have as our finished product. So hopefully that looks like something that you would want for one of your postcards or pictures or even uh, Christmas cards for next year. Maybe you want to get ready for next year. And that's all I have for now and if you want to be able to go and do this again just to replay this that's the great thing about YouTube you can replay this and you can watch it again and you can practice this so if you have Photoshop elements or if you have Photoshop I have the Photoshop tutorial on my site as well so please comment and let me know how I'm doing I will catch you around and I will talk to you later